Okay, so hopefully you just watched that little video. Um, I know a lot of people have probably seen it on Facebook. And it basically compares sizes. And why I thought that was important is because in astronomy, we use different things than normal. Okay. We use something called the metric system, which is used basically throughout the world except for in the United States and two other little countries. And we use scientific notation. Okay. Scientific notation we'll talk about in a minute here, but basically it exists because mathematicians are lazy. And we don't want to write out all of those stinking zeros. So we created a short form and we call it the scientific notation. Alright, but first, here's the metric system. Used worldwide. Okay. The premise is every unit is 10 times that of the previous. Okay. So if you want to go from one unit to another and the units are sequential, you multiply by 10 or divide by 10. Right. If they're not sequential, like, is, um, if you have another unit in between, then you multiply by 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever you need to get from that one unit to the other. And here's some examples. We'll go over those examples in a minute. First, let me tell you, um, with metric system, it applies to everything. Length, volume, mass, time, um, and then you'll have short forms like kilo or milli, right? Kilo is a thousand. Hopefully this is a new term, unless you have a science background, kilo. And then milli is one over a thousand, right? So it's an increment of 10. Now, I did include some little examples here for you. Units of length and units of mass. So, top one, kilometers and meters. So basically, if you want to go from meter to kilometer, you have to divide by a thousand. If you want to go from kilometer to meter, you have to multiply by a thousand. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. 0.75 kilometers is 750 meters or 750 meters is 0.75 kilometers. You can see that 750 divided by 1,000 gives you 0.75. Okay. Meters to centimeters, it's only 100. There's 100 centimeters in one meter. So if you look at a meter stick, it's, which again, we're not in a classroom, so I can't show you, but if you look at a meter stick, there's 100 centimeters on that one meter stick. So if you have 260 centimeters, you have 2.6 meters, and vice versa. If you have 2.6 meters, you have 260 centimeters. Meters to millimeters, a thousand. Why? Because centimeters to millimeters is 10. So if you want to go from millimeters to meters, you go meters to centimeters, which is 10, centimeters to meters, which is 100. So you're multiplying by 10 and by 100, or by 1,000. This is the most math we're going to get into in the entire course. Okay. And then same thing works for mass. Kilograms and grams, 1,000 grams in a kilogram. And then tons in kilograms, again, a thousand liters in milliliters, a thousand. That's all great and dandy, but that probably doesn't mean squat to you, being that most of us here were born and raised in America where we use inches and feet and yards and miles, right? So how do you you in your head kind of go, okay, well, how big is a yard? Like, how big is a meter? How big is a kilometer? I don't understand. I can't convert. Okay. So this is what this slide's for. Converting from the American method to the metric method. One inch is about two and a half centimeters, approximately. You know how big an inch is, so two and a half centimeters fit inside that one inch. 
one meter is just shy of a yard. A yardstick is actually 1.1 meters. Or sorry, 1.1 yards in a meter. Another way to think about that, you know how big feet are, right? So it's just over three feet to make one meter. Now miles and kilometers. One mile is 1.6 kilometers. Okay, so a kilometer is a little bit smaller than a mile. And then I've got an example here on how you convert. Um, this is called the ratio method. And basically you have one mile is 1.6 kilometers and you put those on top of each other. And that equals, I want to find out how much seven miles is, sorry, seven and a half miles in kilometers. So you put those on top of each other. Now you'll notice miles are on top, kilometers are on the bottom. Okay. It doesn't really matter if it's on top or on the bottom, but you got to keep them in the same. So if you want miles on the top, they're both on the top. If you want miles on the bottom, they're both on the bottom. Okay. You just got to match that up. It doesn't really matter which one's on top, which one's on the bottom, as long as they're together. Now you do something that you probably haven't done since high school or middle school, cross multiplication. Okay. So one mile times X kilometers, X meaning I want to know how many. So one mile times, I don't know how many kilometers, they're across from each other, diagonally. Okay. And you keep the equal sign. And then you have the other way, 1.6 times 7.5, again, diagonally. You do the math on that, 1.6 times 7.5 divided by 1, you get 12. So 7.5 kilometers, sorry, 7.5 miles is 12 kilometers. Okay, this is the last slide. It talks about scientific notation. Scientific notation is also done in powers of 10, okay? And again, this is just because mathematicians are lazy. Think about every math teacher you have ever had, right? They probably were just a little bit lazy. So, in this case, we have the number 1.4958 times 10 to the 6. Uh -huh. Basically, what the 10 to the 6 means is you move the decimal, so you get 1.4 or 1 decimal 4, over 6 spots. That's it. So as you can see in the next step, you're moving it 1 hump, 2 hump, 3 hump, 4 hump, 5 hump, 6 hump. Now, the 5 and 6 don't actually have a number value in there, so you stick in zeros. Okay. And you actually get 1,495,800. That is the number that turned from 1.4958 times 10 to the 6 to basically 1.5 mil. Okay. This is all good and dandy. However, if you have, say, 1495, Five, 8 times 10 to the negative 6. I didn't show you an example of that. But a negative means you go the other way. So instead of your humps going the 4, 9, 5, 8, 0, 0, blah, 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 right? you go the other way. The humps are going to go from the decimal point to the left. So it'll be moving over the 1 and then another 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So your number will be, and you might want to kind of follow me with a pen and paper, but 0 0.0000014958. Okay, so if you have a negative, your number's going to get smaller. If you have a positive, your number's going to get bigger. Now, I gave you these two slides, or three slides, with conversions examples of conversions and uh, scientific notation because you do have an assignment. Again, this is the most math you are going to run into in this entire course, but you have an assignment to convert units 
and units just in metric and units from English to metric and vice versa. And you have a page on scientific notation. This is basically, why are you giving us all this math? This is basically because you need to understand metric in order to understand the sizes that we talk about in astronomy. You also need to understand scientific notation in order to understand the distances and sizes we talk about in astronomy. If you watched that video just a few slides ago, you would have seen, and if you want to go back, that'd be great, but you would have seen that the sizes at the bottom are written in scientific notation. And so if you don't know what that means, you can't really follow along. And I know you can say, oh, well, I, I get it. You, know, you just explained it to me. That's awesome. Yeah, try a few questions. It'll help you better understand and kind of cement that understanding into uh, the course.